What is going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jossie Lin Jay and today is actually my off day. But I do have one Zoom meeting and it's because I'm gonna be on a podcast called The Tech Intern, which is ran by a software engineer named Jason who works for Microsoft. I'm really excited because I've never been on a podcast before and I've always wanted to actually be on a podcast. So I think this is a great opportunity. I'm gonna be talking about my internship experience. I'll definitely link the podcast link down below in the description box and I'll definitely be talking about it more once it's actually like done. With all that being said, let me go ahead and hop on this Zoom meeting. All right, so I just got out of podcast. You gotta check it out, especially all of you all who are looking for internships. All right, so in, dang, man, this couch is really, really deep. I need to put this pillow behind me because I'm like, yo. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about, oh my goodness, there are so many gnats in this house because of these plants. I like having house plants. They set a really nice vibe, but these gnats are really, really annoying. As I was saying, in today's video, we are gonna be talking about how to learn to code in 2020. Before you learn how to code, my recommendation is for you to take an aptitude test to see how smart you are. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Don't do that, that's unnecessary. My recommendation is for you to look up the top 10 programming languages to learn. So you can put in like top 10 programming languages to learn in 2020. Um, if you have an understanding of the different types of software development jobs that exist, maybe type in like top programming languages for full stack developers, back end developers, front end developers. I also happen to have a top, is it 10 programming languages, maybe five programming languages. It was for last year, but let's be honest, the best languages have been around for like 10, 20, 30 years anyways, right? JavaScript, HTML, CSS, C++, Python, Java, they ain't going nowhere anytime soon. So if you learn any of those, that's a great place to start. But I know for those of you who have no idea what programming is and or any of those languages that I just mentioned, the first step for you is to actually like look up programming languages. And remember, there's no rule book to this. Do whatever makes you successful. So in this video, I'm just going to guide you. Remember how you were learning how to ride a bike and your mom or dad was like guiding you until you got comfortable enough and the confidence to like pedal and ride the bike on your own? That's basically what this video is for. Jossie, I want to learn how to code in Java. Okay, uh, why? Because Java's cool, you know, you know, Java, man, like, you know, People are always talking about it. <laughs> Java's never been cool. Do you know why you wanna learn that language? Are there any other languages you're interested in pursuing? The next thing you wanna ask yourself is what is your goal? What are you trying to pursue? Are you a high school student? Because if you're a high school student and you wanna learn a program because you wanna get accepted into a computer science program or you wanna pursue computer science in undergrad, then my recommendation is to learn how to program in C++, C, or Java. The reason being is because that will give you a step, a couple steps ahead of your peers who decide to study computer science that, have, don't, that don't have any experience because more than likely your curriculum, your intro courses, your data structure courses, and even your algorithms courses or course, don't take more than one algorithms course if you don't have to. The main courses are going to be centered around C++, Java, C, those programming languages that help students understand the fundamentals of computation, understanding data structures, time complexity, algorithms, you know, how to build linked lists and binary trees. So if you're a student, I would pursue those languages. Before we continue, I wanna thank MakerWatch for sponsoring this video. MakerWatch and I are partnering because they want to promote a new backend software engineering position. So for anyone who is watching this video and is interested in pursuing software engineering, specifically backend, and loves the world of YouTube, this backend software engineering role would be perfect for you. And if you have experience in front-end frameworks like uh, React, experience in Python 3.6 and above, 
of data science, cloud computing, Amazon Web Services, or Google Cloud Platform, or if you have experience as a remote software engineer, you're even higher on their radar. Preferred candidate, you gotta check out these perks. They're crazy. You get 32 days of vacation time. Are you kidding me? Remote office compensation. So if you wanna upgrade your work from home, remote, dev, set up they have a monthly budget for that as well yearly retreat where they fly everyone from the company to one location where they plan the company strategy for the year oh and did i almost forget schedule flexibility night owl morning lark work whenever you feel the most productive and to give you a quick background about MakerWatch, MakerWatch is a tech startup that sponsors hundreds of creators like myself every month on the behalf of creative brands they are backed by a y combinator the most prestigious startup accelerator in Silicon Valley so if you're really interested in startups and startup culture this would be a great job for you and MakerWatch's team is fully remote with team members in six different countries if you want to know more about this career opportunity click on the link below that will be down in the description box before someone else gets the job if you're someone who's like the heck with school I want to be a freelancer learn how to build websites turn any design into a site or be able to design sites and build websites, you can make a lot of money. The challenge is just finding actual customers and then learning. Hmm. But college is usually the best place to learn how to code because you have so many resources and you're forced to do it because it's the major you're pursuing and, and you're paying to be in that class. So you feel more responsibility or, or you feel more accountability to actually learn. But anyways, for those of you all who are interested in becoming a software engineer, maybe a full stack developer, then you should probably pursue something like web development, a very lucrative field that has a lot of opportunities. And if you find yourself in that category, then you should learn JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. Or if you're someone with a personality like Dwight Schrute, then you should pursue binary or COBO. So now that we understand why we're programming, you've probably narrowed down a few programming languages. And my recommendation is to learn, you know, at least two if you could, try to become, I won't say an expert, but try to become good at one language or great at one language that way when you have you know coding challenges or a technical interview they usually give you like a good amount of languages to pursue and then if you're actually doing it like through an app or a website there's like 15 different options but it's good to have a programming language that you understand so well that you feel confident in using that language for a coding challenge so you have your why and you have your goals and you narrow down your programming languages so in order to learn those programming languages, you actually need to get hands-on experience. But my recommendation for those who don't have any programming language experience, because I know some of you all who are watching this video do, but for those of you all who don't, or you don't have any programming experience for a specific language that is very different from your experiences um, with other languages, right? Like, you know, if you're trying to learn Swift and you only know like HTML or CSS, or you only know JavaScript. Um, is HTML really a language? I'm just kidding, I'm a front end dev. I can't even say that. <laughs> it's like illegal for me to say. HTML and CSS are basically like one language together. Like they're becoming a fully functioning programming language. But that's another story for another day. If I were you, I'm gonna tell you what I do when I try to learn how to code and what I do now when I try to learn how to code in a different programming language. I like to go to whatever site that um, is for that programming language. Like for example, um, if I'm trying to learn, like I'm learning Vue.js, right? So I go to Vue.js's site and I learn their syntax. Um, I read some of the documentation, um, some of the, the benefits of the programming language that helps you because then if you understand like why this language was written, you can actually like leverage those benefits when you're, when you're programming, right? All right, so you know your why, like why you're doing this, why you're studying this programming language. You have a goal in mind, um, which will help you narrow down the programming language or languages you're trying to pursue. You understand what programming is and the point of writing code. So then the next step is to do a tutorial. Um, my recommendation is to do something along the lines of like a task app. I think it's called CRUD. Um, but it's C-R-U-D, create, read, update, delete. And when you can do that, if you can build a simple like task 
app where you can like just add some information. It doesn't have to look nice. Add some information, even if it's in the terminal or it's um, you know a website. Be able to create something. You can read it. You can update it and you can delete it. If you could do those four things, then you're in a really good spot. And then I would say start pursuing a personal project, solving some problem. So many people want to code just to code because it's culture, it's fun, you know, it's high paying, but which is the reason why I decided to make this video and the reason why I broke the video up the way I did, because I don't want you to just throw yourself into programming, get frustrated and then give up because you weren't. Um, directed in the right way. You start. You started working on this task app, right? Create, read, update, delete. If I were you, what I would do is I would type in the programming language that you're trying to learn and put create, read, update, delete. Search create, read, update, delete along with the programming language that you're trying to understand. You'll find a lot of tutorials that will help you. So now, let's say you've done all that. Then my next step, like I just mentioned earlier, is to pursue a personal project that solves some problem. So like maybe you can create a calculator app or maybe you can create a currency converter. One really cool thing that you can do is actually build a website. So that'll give you more of like a full stack experience. Um, so build a website, you know, style it, make it look nice and then add some user interaction. So, so maybe have people fill out a form or maybe sign maybe create like this like fake newsletter app that allows people to enter in information and then you actually can grab that information like their email address and you can like ping some API that will um, send a newsletter to that email address you can do that that's really valuable because now you can build a website for someone and have them and create a newsletter for them at the same time and that's really valuable for so many marketing companies and like digital companies that need talent, that understand JavaScript and understand design. The reason why I picked a website is because that's what I'm most familiar with. You can also build an iOS app. That's actually something that I would recommend. Um, however, <laughs> Android and iOS, like native development can be a little intimidating. So I would recommend um, learning how to code in like JavaScript, CSS, and HTML first. And if you can understand that, then I would start to learn um, iOS and Android. Actually, what helps me understand Android and iOS the most is my computer science background, understanding you know C++. Since I programmed so much in C++ and programmed in C, it helped me understand iOS development. I hope this video was helpful. Leave a comment down below um, some of your thoughts, uh, ways you learn to code or some programming languages that you're learning right now. I love to hear about the programming languages that you're programming in and some of the cool projects that you all are working on and, and the jobs you've got. I'm so happy, it just makes me so happy to hear that my channel has inspired you and, and even helped you you know, find a job, like that's amazing, or get the skill sets that you need to become a developer. I want more people to become a part of this wonderful community. So give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it all. Share with someone who you think might benefit from it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I love for you all to become a part of the community. And as always, stay blessed. I'll see you all soon. Peace.